everybody. National Hardware Show, Las Vegas, Nevada. Just setting stuff up here, getting ready to do some griddling. The number one question that I receive every single day of the week is, how do you season your griddle? you want to do is hook up your propane. Slowly open the propane. The instructions say do these one at a time, but I like to play with fire. All burners on high. Press ignite. Now we're just going to let that heat up. Once it gets super hot, we're going to rub olive oil into it. Then I can go ahead and put all my food in the cooler. Mushrooms, diced onion. Now I just have some olive oil just straight off the shelf. It's what we're going to be cooking with today. Again, you can use whatever you want to use. Canola, corn, vegetable oil, flax seed if you really want to. Put a light coat of olive oil on the griddle top. And we're going to rub it in completely coating the steel top. Lots of smoke and this is good because that heat is heating up this oil and we're going to start creating the seasoning on the griddle top. Just watch your hands, you don't want to get burned. So yeah, we'll get the seeds and start cooking here in about a half hour, hour and 80 degrees here today. This thing's super hot. You can see the olive oil is drying up real quick. Hey, how you doing? Good, how are you? Good. So, we're the California reps from Blackstone. Yeah, I met you before. I'm Todd as well. We're Todd okay, Square. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm coming out here to get a little school. Okay, well, we're just getting started. I had one guy that emailed me and he's like, I put on 10 coats of oil. Do you think I'm okay or should I do 12? I mean, you know, if, like, if we were in a hurry now, if we had to cook, we'd just start cooking. You know, it's just the broth, it needs to burn. So, I mean, this is probably like the fifth or sixth coat I've done, you know. So, this will be the first thing we're going to cook today. I just have some chicken tenders here, chicken breast tenders. You can use chicken thighs, whatever. I mean, the meat really doesn't matter. We're just going to show you how to make a stir fry here. Okay. So you see a little stick at first, but after we're done with this stir fry, you'll see a huge improvement as far as uh, uh, you know us getting this thing non-sticks. A little more oil, chicken. You can see that instant sear going on with the chicken. Put a little bit of kosher salt on there, black pepper, onions, different kinds of peppers on there, different kinds of noodles. So we'll start out with some red onion here. So I'll just chop this up. If you think about in your mind like uh, sweet and sour chicken, you know what a nice piece of red onion looks like, just a little one inch square or so. Sugar snap and all the same. Works good. So we'll throw a little bit of snow pea in there again. Just a little more oil to keep that going. Some orange bell pepper. Want some spice? Feel free to throw a jalapeno in there, a shishito, whatever you want to do. Again, stir fry is so forgiving. Love doing stir fry. Garlic and olive oil. You can see that if you look at the veggies, I mean, you know, that looks like it just came out of a lot of a walk. Just beautiful. Whether you're talking fajitas, stir fries, steaks, burgers, whatever, just the killer sear, baby. A little more kosher salt on there. Udon noodles. These, think of these like a, like a low main noodle. It's going to soak everything up. All the flavors are going to get into these noodles, and the noodles are going to be the highlight of the dish. Oh my goodness, it tastes good. Because we're not baking here, we're not concerned with times, you know. I, I'm not in a hurry thinking this stuff's on fire, there's no flame. So whether this takes me three minutes or four minutes, it'll get done when it gets done, and I'm not worried about stuff getting uh, burned or anything. Pineapple. 
pineapple straight down on the grill top. Top and stuff up like a pineapple. Cilantro! Woo! That's just the sugar that's uh, burning on the griddle, that's caramelizing on the griddle. This stuff also works great if you want to do a sweet Thai chili pizza. We do a little griddle pizza on here and use that Thai chili sauce as the sauce for the pizza. Uh, green onion, cilantro, chicken, it's so good. Again, if you, if you want to use rice, just do the same thing. Just put pre cooked rice on there. Into the serving can. Look at that. Looks delicious. The pineapple, you're going to love it. Want to add more garlic? Add more garlic. Add some pepper. Go ahead and put a jalapeno in there. Serrano, whatever you want to do. One last little touch of the sweet Thai chili. Looks pretty enough. I got all the pork too. Thanks, Andrew. Grab a pork. Perfect. This is the first meal that we've cooked on the griddle. We have a big old mess here. All that sugar has burned up. We have food left over. So most things that you cook, a burger, a quesadilla, a steak, it's simple. Just a simple uh, brush. But you can see we got quite a mess here. So we're on high heat. The food's been done for five, six, seven minutes. You'll see everything is literally starting to turn to ash already. So all you want to do is, you don't want to dig in there, but you want to gently scrape everything off the griddle. The object is to get anything that's not steel off the griddle, but you don't want to dig in there because you're trying to build seasoning. So go ahead and scrape everything off. The other thing you could do is water. I don't use a ton of water uh, because it'll actually lift your seasoning up and you know you've worked hard over an hour or two, three hours to build a seasoning, so you don't want to necessarily destroy that seasoning. But we'll go ahead and get all that stir fry mess off the top of the griddle. Now one thing you can do is, I'll do half and half. This side of the griddle will scrape it and get all that ash off. Like that. Uh, then the other half of the griddle, we'll do what I said. We'll use a little bit of water. I, again, I would, I'd use water as a last resort, but it's always nice to have a bottle around you because if I was cooking a party here and I wanted to start cooking hamburger or something, just a little bit of water, you'll see all this stuff instantly uh, deglaze off the griddle. And then you can literally just move it all back into the uh, into the grease cup. Wash your hands, see if you get real hot. If you want to use gloves, you don't want to burn yourself. We have lots of gloves. Just get all that residue off the griddle. Anything that you don't want in your food. Get your favorite oil again. Put a little coat of your olive oil, your canola oil, whatever. And then just uh, rub it in. And then it'll be glistening in the sun and it's ready for your next meal, whether we're cooking pancakes or crepes, it's ready to go. The griddle's been on for maybe an hour total. It won't be perfect, but you'll see already a big difference. You know, it's pretty much getting to be non-stick now. You can pretty much start to flip pancakes, turn a crepe on there, and then after you cook one or two more meals, this thing will be just as smooth as glass. Ah, oh, there we go. There it is. It's Mark Gill, everybody. Woo! It's not Tobin, everybody. This guy can cook. I love it. Oh, it's Mark Gill, baby. He's the griddle machine. He lives in Clearwater, Florida. You see him on HSN. You see him cooking on Blackstones all across the country. What's the word, Mark? Where is Blackstone, brother? That's what the word is. So if I was done for the night, or if I just wanted to start cooking another meal, again, just the process of making sure you get all that food residue off the griddle, get all that junk off there, put a little more oil on there, and we're good to go, ready for the next recipe again. We're getting to be non-stick now, just after about one hour. Literally just turn it all the way off, make sure that thing is nice and shiny, get all that, those specks off there, and then let it cool down for 15-20 minutes, cover it up, good to go for the night. I love your noodles, your chicken, and your pea sprouts. Everything <laughs> was great. That grill is wonderful. Everybody should own one. It's a basic sweet Thai chili stir fry. The noodles were udon noodles. You can buy them at most grocery stores. Yeah, 
noodle, kind of like a soba noodle, hokeen noodle, kind of like a lo mein noodle. I uh, had chicken breast in there. We had some. Ham? We no, we didn't. We had chicken breast. We had garlic, red onion, uh, orange bell pepper, snow pea, pineapple, salt and pepper, and of course sweet Thai chili sauce with uh, red chili, garlic, and sugar. Oh my God. <laughs> Great. Thank you. So, much. <laughs> so I've cooked three recipes on here, and the griddle's been on for about two and a half hours. Let's take a look at what two and a half hours of Thai heat can do for the griddle. And then we also have some sauces if you'd like to add more sauce. If your griddle isn't seasoned well enough, you need to apply more heat and more oil. When in doubt, let it burn a little longer and a little more oil. Two and a half hours, absolutely perfect seasoning on the Blackstone griddle. Until next time, this is Todd. Thanks for watching, everybody. Praise the Lord.